Warning! Chlorine is very poisonous gas. Benzene and chlorobenzene are cancerogens. This video is for educational purposes only. Chlorobenzene is benzene derivative in which one of the hydrogen atoms is replaced with chlorine. The reaction of direct benzene halogenation is a type of electrophilic aromatic substitution and I have already showed how it's done with bromine. Chlorine is a bit trickier because it's a gas, however many of the steps in the synthesis are similar. The reason I'm chlorinating benzene, besides the demonstrational purposes, is because I plan to convert it into a compound called Brady's reagent. This compound is used in analytical chemistry to identify carbonyl compounds and also in synthesis to purify them. So here is the reaction setup. As you can see, it's quite more complicated than the one for the bromobenzene. In the left, I have a chlorine generator connected through a drying flask to the reaction vessel. The reaction vessel is equipped with a condenser because this reaction is even more exothermic than the bromine one. It also produces hydrogen chloride, which will be led to my film hood. I charge the reaction flask with 30 grams of dry benzene. I also added a piece of steel wool, which will react with the chlorine to make ferric chloride and act as a catalysis. The flask that is part of the chlorine generator was charged with 40 grams of potassium permanganate and the funnel on the top is filled with 200 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. When I opened the stopcock, some of the acid started to dip on the permanganate, reacting with it to produce the chlorine. This gas is led via tube to the drying flask, where it is bubbled through concentrated sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid has very high affinity for water and makes the gas completely anhydrous. After that, the chlorine is led to the reaction flask, where it is bubbled in the benzene. At first, no reaction seems to occur, but the chlorine is actually dissolving in the benzene and some of it reacts with the iron. When enough catalysis had formed, the chlorination of benzene started, which as you can see was very vigorous. Soon the solution started to boil and the amount of chlorine passed should be controlled in order to reduce formation of polychlorinated compounds. Towards the end of the reaction the solution became almost black. The flask is now heated on an oil bath to 70 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to complete the reaction. After that the contents of the flask are transferred to a separatory funnel and the flask was washed two times with distilled water. When the funnel was shaken, the organic layers cover lightened up a bit and became more brownish. The layers were separated and the organic phase was returned to the funnel. Now 30 ml 10% sodium hydroxide were added and the funnel shaken again. However, this time some nasty emulsion formed, which took time to separate. When it eventually happened, the water layer, which this time was the lower, was drained. The last washing was done with some saturated sodium chloride solution to dry the chlorobenzene. The layers were again separated and the chlorobenzene transferred to an Erlenmeyer flask. The final drying was accomplished with the addition of some anhydrous sodium sulfate which pulls the water forming a hydrate. After several minutes the mixture was filtered through a filter paper. The sodium sulfate was washed two times with some dichloromethane to dissolve any chlorobenzene left and maximize the yield. To separate and purify the product, I used a fractional distillation. Everything that came below 130 Celsius was collected in an Erlenmeyer flask and this was our first fraction. This contained the dichloromethane I used to transfer the chlorobenzene as well as tiny amounts of unreacted benzene. Then at 133 degrees Celsius, a very sharp fraction distilled over, which was chlorobenzene. 
When all the chlorobenzene had distilled over, the temperature started dropping because all that was left in the flask were some polychlorinated compounds, which have much higher boiling point than chlorobenzene. Here is my final yield of 13.5 grams of chlorobenzene. This corresponds to a percent yield of 32%, which is much lower than in case of bromobenzene. The reason is that chlorine is much more reactive element than bromine and the faster one reaction goes, the harder it is to control it. In our case, much of the chlorine reacted to make polysubstituted benzenes, as well as oxidizing the benzene to form some black tar that you saw at the end of the reaction. Anyway, 13.5 grams are more than enough to make the Bradys reagent and show its characteristic reactions with the carbonyls. Be sure to subscribe and turn the notifications bell on, so you will not miss it. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with other people that might find it interesting.